We're back in the train shed today. You may have seen in a recent video that we spent quite a lot of time and effort repainting some old Gresley Teak coaches, which we've got on the layout there. We ran them at the end of that video with uh, Woodcock, beautiful apple green A4 Pacific Bud. I don't know if you remember, but we did mention that we wanted to run them behind... Live Steam Mallard! Our, our Hornby Live Steam Mallard, which is something that Simon's very excited about. Our only garter blue A4. So uh, we're going to run that today and we're going to show you how it works. Uh, we're going to show you us putting water in it and it uses uh, electrical current to heat the water rather than a, a fire or a gas burner or a, a Yeah, but it runs on burner. really um, like real live steam. But it does run on real live steam, yes. The water, the electricity heats the water and it has a little boiler in it and a single uh, piston and cylinder inside. And yeah, it runs on real live steam and it's a wonderful thing and we're very lucky. It smells nice. It does smell great, we're very lucky to have it. So let's get it out. We'll show you how we fill it up with water and oil it and all that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, we'll see it running and hopefully we'll see it pulling these lovely Gresley ticks. Enjoy the video. Okay, open it up, Simon. <laughs> there it's it like is. Exaggeration. Take the polystyrene layer off. There's our first layer. Um, and then under there, there's the loco itself. There is live steam mallard. Um, after we run it, it's gonna be really hot. So just a little disclaimer. Do not pick it up until it's cooled down. I'm just going to lift this out and put it on the surface for now. Well, what? My, my job is to put it on the rails. Yeah, if we get the two controllers out, because these are heavy. I'm going to have a look at the things inside the cab. Do. And then we can lift out this top layer. And underneath it's we go. Heavy. It does come with a complete circuit of track, uh, some tools. It's exactly the same as CD. Um, this is another thing that you definitely need. Some heat proof gloves. Very useful for handling it when it's hot. Live steam oil and a pair of syringes which are for inserting the, the water, the and distilled oil. water and the oil. But now we get on to the part where we show you how to do it. So, strangely enough, if when you take this cap off, the boiler is under the cap. Unscrew the screw and then pour some water in. It has to be distilled. You can't use tap water because it all the impurities will get into all the moving parts. Under the chimney and the whistle, there's a screw. You unscrew the screw, that's where you get the oil. But we don't pull it like that, we use a syringe. So, we'll see you in a minute when, you, when we actually do all this. We've got our controllers connected up. It has a very large controller, this. This is the main power supply part. And then this is the separate controller system. They connect together at the back and the output comes out of here. And we've just got that currently going into a terminal block, which goes off to our bus. Um, I like to call it a chocolate block. Or a chocolate block, which connects to the track at various points. Um, it's really important to have- Specifically a, there and there. A couple of electrical connections to your track when you've got a circuit this big, because voltage drop off can be quite dramatic. Is that on? Yeah. Yeah, well done. Good. Okay, so it's time to get it fueled up. So the first thing we're going to do is put some water in it. So Simon, do you want to go and take the back of the tender off? Uh, like we showed you in that last clip. Coal load comes out like that. And then I will unscrew the boiler cap. And the boiler is actually in the tender in this loco. But it's also the water tank. They are one and the same. Is this the water one? The larger syringe is for water, yeah. Do you want to fill that up? And then suck it all up. And you've got a big air bubble there, but that's all right. That's right, and then slowly squeeze the water into the boiler. Not too fast, otherwise it'll come rushing out. You lift your elbow up a little bit. That's better. Great job. That's good. If you lift the needle actually off the bottom of the tank, it'll go in more easily. Well done, that's good. And if it starts to overflow, that means you've filled it up and it's time to stop. Well done. I actually find it takes two and a half uh, syringe full to make it completely full. Right, it's full of water. We're going to put the uh, bung back in the top. It's not called a bung. What well, would you call is, it? What would you call it, Simon? The coal load isn't called a bung. No. I already make coal load. No, I'm just putting the uh, 
screw. bung in. I'm going to call it a bung. Right, cola back on, please, Simon. So you need to put that little clip in at the front, yeah, I know. and then that's it. I just forgot. Okay, now Simon's going to lift the funnel off. And the, ch the, and the chimney. And that gives us access to well, the it, oiling point there. Right, so let's get that screw out. This is a bit more viscous, so it requires a bit more slurping, if you see what I mean. Here we go. Right, you come in here, Simon, you can squirt it in. And then very slowly squeeze down on the plunger. There we go. <laughs> there it is. Right, I'm going to put the bum back in. Screw that back also, in. Also, I think it's made of plastic, but harder plastic. Yeah. I think it's some kind of heat melt resistant plastic. Right, you pop the chimney cap back on, Simon. Okay, we've got Mallard on the track. We've got it full of water. We've got it recently oiled. It's time to switch on the power. So Simon, would you do the honors? Yes. So this is the voltage control. Um, and that has gone to the plus, which is super heat, the highest voltage setting. And that's good for getting the boiler warmed up from cold. When it gets to temperature, we're gonna turn the voltage down a bit and run it to the lower voltage which lowers the steam pressure slightly and means it doesn't go racing quite so fast. This control is for controlling the steam valve. It's the regulator. Itself, it's the regulator if you like. And now we just have to wait for it to warm up and when it's ready, it will puff steam out of the safety valve yeah. and make a noise to show you it's ready. Just like this. Catch it. Oh yeah, <laughs> that means it's ready to go. It's going like psh so, Simon, could you very gently reach and couple the coaches behind it? Okay. Always better to run this with coaches because it gives it a bit of load. Otherwise, it goes racing off much too fast. And before we roll, the other really important thing we need to do is turn down the uh, voltage control to either there or actually, I'm going to turn it down to there because I don't want it to race off too fast. And then we're going to use this and very gently click it to the right mm -hmm which hopefully will activate forward movement. And as you click it, you can hear five. the mechanism start to move. It should go to five before in it there. starts to move. And you see the red light coming on each time I click it. That indicates the steam valve is still closed, but at some point it will go green. Up, steam valve open. Light green. Running now, yeah? I'm happy. I'm happy. Yes. It's, it's working perfectly. Yeah, it's going pretty well. Yeah. Also, it looks like it's really wet. Yeah, it's a bit oily. Probably over oil a bit, but it's going pretty fast as well. Shall I try and slow it down a bit? Yeah. I'm terrified. I'll just flip this back one the other way. Yeah, it's too fast now. When it's on the it picks up speed, but when it's on the corners, it slows. London M Eastern R. That's my plan. You might see some steam coming out of the car now. Yeah. We've just about got it running at a sensible speed now. It is difficult to drive, isn't it, Simon? Yeah, really. It went, it went racing off when we first started. 
um, and it's a balancing act with this control, getting the steam valve at just the right place and the, uh, the water heater. So we're, we're running it now on power level three, um, so it's going quite fast. But we could, let's just actually, let's turn it down a notch and it should slow down, although it'll take a little while. Um, but it's, it has slowed it's down. now using a lower voltage. You can see the voltage control here. So yeah, the steam pressure should get a bit lower and it'll run a bit more slowly. And nicely. It off, when, with a full boiler it runs for about 20 minutes before it runs out of water and then when it runs out this gives it a, a trip sound to tell you to switch it off and then you have to wait for it to cool down before you refill it and run it again. It does smell lovely doesn't it Simon? Yeah, yeah. I wish it, there was something like smell a vision So we could share the smell with our viewers. That'd be great wouldn't it? Yeah, but no one's invented it yet. Lord. If you were a li tiny little double O gauge figure who could fit inside, that'd be a treat. Yeah, we do have little figures. Marks we've seen in our previous video. There are people in our coaches. Can't it's really see it's even well. better in the yeah, speed. Yeah. The cat has come to see the live steam mallard in action <laughs> in the train shed. What do you think, Summer? Do you like the? Uh, do you like mallard? Yeah. yeah. Are you interested at all in the train or are you only interested in snuffling around <laughs> underneath the baseboards? I mean, she has had a brief look when I picked her up to have a look. Oh. Mm. Cat's a new What do you reckon, Simon? Good. Oh, yeah. There it is. Mm. There it goes. Okay, so it's starting to slow down a bit. I think it's getting near the end of its uh, tank full of water. It has been running for over 15 minutes now at a nice, consistent speed. So at some point it will run out of water and stop and we'll switch off and let it cool down. Getting much slower now. Oh, it's come to a complete stop. I guess there's not quite enough uh, water pressure left to keep it moving. I'm going to give it a little nudge. Get it going. Uh oh. There we go. Get it going a little bit more. No, I think it's coming to the end of its, uh, its first boiler full of water. Usually it beeps at me when this happens but it's definitely stopped. So I'm gonna, oh there we go, that's the beep. So I'm gonna switch it off and switch the switch on the back. And then we just gotta wait for it to cool down and then we can either clean it up and pack it away or we can fill it up and run it again. There's a bit of steam coming out. I can't see it anymore. One thing to watch out for is the live steamer does split out quite a lot of oil. So you need to give the tracks a really good clean after each running session. Born be live steam mallard. Born be live steam mallard. Whistle. Oh, it's more annoying than ever. Turn it off, please. All right.
Whistle stopped. So annoying. The whistle sounds when you're changing from forwards to reverse gear. Or reverse to forwards gear. Just to show you how important it is to clean the rails after you've been running your live steam mallard because of the oily deposits. Here's a cleanish bit of kitchen towel. Do? Just give it a right, just along that short section there, and then... Ah! Um, so, yeah, very important to clean your tracks after a running session with this before you run anything else, I think. The water's run out at the end of our second run, so we've closed the steam valve and switched it off, and now we're waiting for it to cool down. We've had a good couple of runs, haven't we, Simon? Yeah. Yeah, OK, so probably time to reset the railway back to normal DCC operation. Ready for next time. So we'll see you in the next video. Yeah. Hope you've enjoyed the live steam mallard. Like, subscribe, like it says on here. And also don't forget to drop us a comment. See you next time. It doesn't get much better than that. Silence.